Hello, 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 my friends. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Good whatever part of the day it is for you. I am here with some wonderful friends for an awesome Halloween special. That was a cool cover of Bloody Tears or something from Castlevania to get us into the, the Curse of Strahd mood tonight. Uh, yeah, that's the EDM version, Shogi. That's definitely... <laughs> or the hard rock version, the metal version. But uh, I'm super excited to see. You can see some of us have dressed up. Some of us are probably all Halloweened out by now, I'm guessing, from all the other D&D, <laughs> mm -hmm. &D, trick-or-treating, or whatever they've been doing. But uh, we are very, uh, I'm very excited to be here with these wonderful people. Uh, just to reintroduce everybody, on top left, we have Archon. Above me is Doreen. Top right, we got Jitterbug or Jeremiah. To my left is Shogi. And then to my right is Zach. And I am... You're a resident Christmas caroler slash vampire hunter <laughs> named Rand. And we are going to uh, do a a uh, little one shot that is called Strahd Must Die. Uh, as Doreen has informed me that's what it's called. And she will be our DM for this. So I'm going to jump over to our main screen and make sure my uh, things are all working. And we should be ready to go. So take it away, Doreen. All right, thank you. So just to kind of remind all of you guys, um, you, this is still within our regular Curse of Strahd campaign. Um, however, you've found your consciousness kind of doubled up within a native Barovian's consciousness. And the timing is very uncanny that you guys happen to uh, converge because it just happens to be that these Barovians have had enough and guided and inspired by the legendary vampire hunter Van Richten, you guys have decided to bring the fight to Strahd at Castle Ravenloft. Um, unfortunately, before you could even enter the castle, as you guys were barreling down the Slavich Road, uh, your carriage was attacked by a few gargoyles, it looked like, and Van Richten was carried off and then dropped in a deep chasm. Your carriage continued forward towards the castle and eventually crashed right in front of the gates. And I'll bring you there so you can see the map. The, the horses there have died mysteriously. Oh, poor horses. Mysteriously. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is just past sunset at this moment. You guys have just crashed and fallen out of this, this broken carriage. And as you're kind of getting up and getting your bearings, you can see the the large doors in front of the castle opening. Hold on, I'm trying to... Can everyone else see your tokens in the map? Yeah, yeah I can see them, yes. Uh huh. I do not see anything. Tor Jeremiah, it's always your token. <laughs> it is. Always your <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry, my dog's not at the sitter today. Oh. But anywho, um, yeah. I will work on your token. Sure. While I introduce you to this very tall, you would almost think lanky if not for the broad chest and the shoulders. But he is quite pale. And you can notice as the man walks out, and you take note of his fine scarlet red vest, complete with some plate armor. And he, his hair is slipped back. It's straight, dark black. His eyes kind of survey the scene with a little bit of amusement and a slight grin crosses his face. Each of you would know who you're looking at and your knees kind of fall weak for just a moment. You recognize this as Strahd von Zarevich. 
and I will bring a little picture there for everyone to see. He holds himself in a manner befitting a nobleman. And as he takes a second to kind of look at each of you, his smile widens. And you can see in his hand that he's holding an hourglass filled with dark blood red sand. Mm. And as he walks out, let me put him here so you can see his token. As he walks out, uh, he says to you, my, my, don't we know how to make an entrance? What are you guys thinking and feeling right now? I was not expecting to see the big man so soon come out and greet us. Merrick takes a quick look around just to make sure everyone seems unhurt for the most part. Um, you guys might yeah. be a little banged up. Um, some bruises, some very superficial cuts here and there. But for the most part, you look pretty intact. Um, Game-wise, you have not lost any hit points. Okay. Anton will be uh, staring intently at Strahd, uh, trying to note. Zach, I can't hear you. I was able to hear him. Jeremiah, I was able to hear him. Yeah. All right, hold on. Let's you might have him. Side, yeah, you might have him muted. I did. You're right. Okay. <laughs> and Anton is staring intently at Strahd, just kind of studying, um, trying to take in everything, uh, watching for any sign that this might be an illusion rather than Strahd in the flesh. Okay. You can definitely make uh, your investigation check if you'd like. And while he's doing that, Merrick yells out, You killed an Octavio! We will destroy you, Strad." And he kind of chuckles. He's like, Yes, I do regret that, but no worries. I can bring his body back and have some fun with him later. But, speaking of fun, I know exactly what has brought you here to my castle. And... Since it is the eve of my wedding, I am feeling generous. So, I won't have my minions kill you outright. Instead, if you would like, I will give you some time to search what you're looking for. Three hours. You'll have room full run of my castle. And since you are not my guests, I cannot guarantee your safety. But should you find what you're looking for, I think you'll know where to find me. If you don't, by the end of the three hours, I will find you. Why would you give us time? Are you so arrogant? Holds up his hand. Child, I recognize that I have taken away your leader, and so puts you at a disadvantage. <sighs> More importantly, you killed our horses. If you wish, you can take two of mine. Fair trade. However, since I have deprived you of the great Van Richten, he, you can sense that he isn't at all worried or concerned about the reputation that precedes Van Richten. Uh, but he continues, he says, if one of you are brave enough to come here, 
in front of me. I will offer you a boon that will help you within my walls. All I ask is for a bite, a drink of your blood in return. Now, DM talk here. I want to give you guys an understanding of exactly what he's proposing here. First of all, the three hours, that is going to be real, real lifetime. I'm going to be keeping track of the three hours and I will, and you guys can also keep track, but I will keep you guys updated so that you understand and know um, how much time you have left. So, because I feel like it's really, really going to impact the decisions that you make. If you know, oh, holy crap, we only have one more hour left. Um, on top of that, the boon that he is talking about. After one bite, you guys will be allowed to roll um, a d8. And that will give you certain little bit of extra things that will be present throughout the entirety of these three hours. Um, for instance, one of them is um, your melee weapon will do extra radiant damage. Um, cantrips that deal damage will also do radiant damage. Um, resistance or immunity between being charmed, restrained, paralyzed, um, other things that will help you teleport throughout the castle. And then um, one of them, which is probably the most important one, is the character learns the fastest way to the room containing the closest item or being determined by the, um, <clears throat> the fortune that you guys were given. I also want you to know that all of these um, extra things that you're given, while they may be useful in some instances in the castle, they are explicitly not useful against Strahd himself. So. Take that as you will. Um, any questions about that? Um, I would speak up to Strahd and say, oh, well, what do you receive in return? Yeah, that was my question. Um, well, I'm a little bit peckish at the moment. So firstly, I would feed my hunger. Other than that, that's all that I would take from you. Can I do an insight check? Yeah, absolutely. Don't believe him. I do believe him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, and honestly, that's something I touched on with Ryan not too long ago. Um, being Barovians and kind of being very familiar with Strahd him, himself, how he rules, he is at least a man of his word. Uh, he won't take something back um, and go against his honor. So when he says all he will take from you is some of your blood, that's, you know, just he's just going to bite you and that's it. And he'll still give you the boon. Um, you would trust his word. Um, so, yes. Well, I'm thinking Dargos would actually turn to look at his companions and say, is anybody brave enough to allow this monster to take a part of you inside of him? And Strahd just kind of, again, smiles softly to himself and just looks each of you over. Merrick, his 5'6 frame, looks up and says, I will go. He looks back at the rest of you. The rest of you are still human, untouched by the taint of Strahd. I am already a monster. What does it matter if I have more of a curse? Uh, so as he starts to walk forward, mm -hmm. can I cast my summon spirit companion? Um, yeah. Okay. And I would like to bring forth the vengeful ancestor spirit. So nobody okay. else can see this. And it just... tell everyone what that does. 
Yeah, so it's it's special things that I get as the type of druid that I am. Uh, essentially, it uh, calls forth or summons a companion from the spirit world that offers certain benefits to individuals that it's close to. Uh, it also benefits me as well. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is is cast the Vengeful Ancestral Spirit and just have that out following. Um, I know it's, I'm going to butcher these names. I'm not sure who is who, but following Archon <laughs> up. To yeah. That. Merek. yeah, Merek. Merek. And then also, DM question, is the bite mm -hmm. considered an attack? Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. Um, as, as Merrick walks forward as well, Dargos wants to put his hand on his shoulder and say, You are very brave. I will give what help I can. I'd like to use the cantrip Guidance, which will... Whoops. Uh... Give him, it can roll a d4 and add the number to any ability checks that might happen from he's, what he's about to experience, basically. Okay. In case um, he has to make going, any ability checks. Sure. Going back to um, Anton, um, just looking at Strahd himself, it absolutely does appear that this is the Strahd, not some conjured image of him. All right. So Strahd just kind of looks Only you Only Anton knows it. that? Yes. Okay. Unless he wants to relay that information. Not just yet. Okay. Um, so Strahd looks you over, Merrick. He just kind of looks you up and down. All right, well, let's do this then. Enjoy the taste of my reconstructed flesh. You've already butchered me once. And he kind of pulls you in close. Ugh. And gets really close to your ear, Merrick. Almost uncomfortably. And he says, and I enjoyed that. And then he bites down. Ugh. So I'd like to, at that point in time, use my reaction and with the vengeful ancestor spirit, mm -hmm. I can mark Strahd as my quarry. Okay. Nice. And do I take and damage from this? Remind okay. everyone what that does, Jeremiah. Great. So sure. if I've marked something as my quarry... Um, I can sense the direction that the, of that creature's location as long as it's still within a thousand feet of us. Okay. And if it's moving, I know the direction of its movement. Um, and it lasts until I either mark another creature or running water 10 feet wide blocks our path. So okay. I'll know where he's at and which direction he's going as long as we're within a thousand feet. All right. Um, and there's no save against that mark? Nope. Okie dokie. <laughs> um, so yes. Merrick, as he bites down on your neck, his teeth sinking deep in and tightening on, um, on your muscles, you can feel the warmth of your blood dripping down your neck. And you will take... Doo -doo -doo. All right, where is his bite? Oh, there it is. Let me roll it. It's not going to be that bad. I don't think so. <laughs> I hope That's not. what they all say. <laughs> <laughs> Never so trust a DM. Uh, so it's 10 bludgeoning damage. So uh, keep in mind, some of you guys are going to yes. need to keep track of what damage is being done. So I have resistance, so I'll just take the five. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... Right as he kind of pulls away from you, you can hear him whisper something in your ear in a language that you don't recognize. Roll a d8 for me, please. What 
would I have heard right. what was said or no? No, this is okay. this was way too um, far. And again, it was like literally, you could feel his lips even kind of brushing against your ear. <laughs> would it be well, would it be obvious to me if this is a, a spell being cast? Um, maybe. Since I have knowledge of that, sure. It's not like really relevant if you know it's a spell okay. or not. Um, <laughs> so non-committal. Okay. <laughs> So for yours, you know what, I don't, I'm going to give you, um, the character instantly regains a spell slot of their choice. Like of any level? Yeah, why not? Oh, <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, for, for your, <laughs> yeah, it's really good. How often can this happen? I'm just going to say within once within these three hours. Okay. And with that, Strahd releases you. Can I, as he's releasing me, I want to reach out and do a shocking grasp on him. <laughs> if you really want to. <laughs> Merrick does. Merrick does, not me. All right. Here we go. As soon as I find my character sheet. <laughs> he kind of bats your hand away. Says, child, <sighs> you are not ready yet. And he turns around and walks into the castle. The doors left open. I turn back to the group and say, well, actually, question, when we saw Rictavio fall, was it obvious that he's a goner? Like, is it yeah. possible? Okay, there's not even no. any point in, like, looking. I don't even bother, and I wouldn't let you anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do we have um, all of our weapons and everything on us, or do we need to, like, gather our stuff from this carriage here? I'd say you guys would probably have done that as you're getting out, okay. um, you know, getting your bearings. So, yeah, you guys would have everything you need. And the clock has started. Merrick turns back really quick and looks at everyone else. And there's some tears rolling down his cheek. And he says, he killed Rictavio. He killed all the others. We must kill him tonight. Well said, Merrick. Let's proceed. No time like the present. Do you guys remember what you're searching for in this castle? Yes. Yes. So Merrick yes. turns to Anton. Where to first? Let us proceed to the castle courtyard. And then we'll begin our reconnaissance. I agree. We must see what we are dealing by, with. By courtyard. You want to go around the uh, castle? I presume there's like an outer wall and then a yes. courtyard and then a keep. You guys are basically uh, in the like the courtyard right now. Oh, we're you're, inside you're, the gate oh, already? So this is the yeah, you're already past the main wall. We're entering the keep. Okay. Oh. It, okay. So what you're looking at right now, that's the entryway, the main entryway into Castle Ravenloft itself. And the doors are wide open. The doors What's wide open. the lighting situation? So when you're looking into that front entry room, it's pretty dang dark. Um, but as you, you kind of get closer, you see that there's a, another uh, large double doors, uh, complete like directly opposite of the one that's currently open. Merrick lights the torch. Okay, hold on. Let me get. I'll set that up. What's everyone else doing? Uh, Dargos wants to use the light oh, cantrip um, to uh, maybe uh, maybe his loot that he carries, maybe cast it on his loot so that it's shining light as he carries it forward. Okay. 
I believe Anton I have a loot. Anton is going to do the same on his staff, and he's also going to cast oh, Mage yeah. Armor on himself. Yeah, as they're, as they're walking in, Merrick puts his hands together, and electricity erupts from his hands and shoots out through his body, and I'm going to trigger my uh, extra resilience here. All right, and tell me the distances for your light spells. Uh, light has a duration of one hour. Uh, object sheds bright light in a 20-foot radius and a dim light for an additional 20 feet. So okay. 40 feet in total, it looks like. And we can cast that on other people's equipment, too, if anybody needs it. Yeah, I don't have a light source. Light source, either. Okay, whatever yeah. you'd like, you can cast it on. Yeah, same. On the top of my quarter staff. Okay. Uh, just my shield. Okay, I'll cast light on uh, Oleg's shield, or Galo, as he wants to be called. Gilo, is that what it was? Jello. Jello? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, is Victor with us? Um, did you see your sheet and all the stuff I added today? Uh, yeah, I see the, okay. uh... You should be able to pull out the token. If oh. not, let me... <laughs> oh, it's a Frankenstein. Whoa. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's, not, nice. he's not quite that big. But... <laughs> Is he standing right. next to Merrick? <laughs> and this doesn't shock us in any way, right? We know that this thing. Uh... No, I mean technically, it was there the entire time. Okay. Can uh, Anton? What does it look like? What are we looking at? So it was at one time. It was a, a fairly large human man um, who was executed as a criminal. Um, Anton him back together again and reanimated him so he's uh and it's pretty obvious that the body has not been treated kindly since then there's uh scars and, and um wounds all over it and looks like it might have been had parts hacked off at times that were then reattached <laughs> and um where there were gaping holes they've been reinforced with steel plates but uh, so yeah, it's kind of like the, just this hulking, silent guy, and uh, he carries around the blade of the guillotine that behead, be, beheaded him. Oh, awesome. Nice, <laughs> nice. Merrick looks up at him and then looks at you and says, "This creature is disgusting. You should stop these blasphemous practices after we kill Strad." You may change your tune if this changes the tide of battle. Indeed. And I pat Victor on the back. Good Victor. <laughs> um, You've wasted much time. We need to proceed. Yeah, but he has his uses. Agreed. Let us, uh, let's, let's not waste more time. Let's move forward, yes. Targos agrees. Uh, uh, Anton DM. is going to cast Arcane Eye. And DM, I'd also like to operate under the assumption that my ancestral spirit is just in my space until I say otherwise. Okay. Um, so how do you want to do the I? Okay, hold on. Ancestral. Um, well, what, firstly, what are you looking to do? I'm just going to send the I around scouting. Okay. And it can basically, well, for people that don't know it, can you tell them what the arcane eye does? Yeah, so it's an invisible eyeball that appears, and I can move it 30 feet every round. And uh, as an action, yeah, it's an action to move it, but I can see everything that it sees. And what's the duration on that? Is it just concentration? Up to one hour for as long as I'm concentrating. Okay. And I'm just going to send it. I'm going to send it straight up over the 
the wall. Uh, try to find the tallest tower or the tallest point of the castle. Mm -hmm. and find the closest window or opening and go into there. Okay. Give me a moment. Oh, actually. Mm -hmm. That'll be quicker if I just pull out my handy dandy big old map. And while she's working on that, just to let everybody know that if you are within five feet, so base to base with my character, uh, right now you have, um, you can add my spellcasting ability modifier to any saving throws against divination spells, being charmed, or any effect that would read the thoughts. Read your thoughts. Um, okay. And so if we keep me in the middle of the pack as we move, we can hopefully prevent something from happening as we, until obviously we have to disperse, but. Okay. Cool. We should okay. probably decide on a marching order as we move through here then, right? I'd like to keep myself in the middle. I think that we should keep Turl and Anton in the middle. Okay. One in the front and two in the sides, I guess. Yeah. So you can maximize the people around me. That would yeah, be... well. You'll have like you in the I, front. Uh, if I move like right in here. Have Shogi lead the way, right? Since he's. Yeah, yeah, I, can, I can go in the front. How tough is uh, Herman Munster over there? He's uh, not as tough as he might look. <laughs> he's got a big heart. <laughs> Eminently big shoes, nothing else. Yeah, if we maybe have him bring it up the back so nothing comes behind us. We can create good. a mini Christmas tree. Merrick can be one of the people in the front. He is actually surprisingly tough. Okay. That sounds like me and um me and Anton are wait, did you say Anton's in the middle, I guess you said? Well, it's best to have Anton and Tural in the middle yeah. of whatever okay. we create. Okay. All right. So if you're looking for the tallest window above where you guys are, that's going to put you, it's not going to take you to the highest peak because the highest peak doesn't have any windows. Okay. How far below that is the window? That is about... It's quite far. Okay. Very, very far. Okay. The window is closed, just so you know. But as you make your way in, just want to make sure I put you in the right room. I think that would be it. Oh, well, if not, that's where you're going. <laughs> yeah, so it brings you into this room that uh, one part, most of the one wall is complete, complete windows. Um, this beautiful kind of lattice work uh, over the windows, and it brings you into a very comfortable. I, I'm not going to pull you to the map yet, since you technically are not there. But it um, looks like kind of um, like a living space where someone has been staying here. Okay. Uh, it's. Furnished with very comfortable um, chairs and couch. There's a bookcase that sits on the east wall. There's lanterns that are hanging up in here. And let me just check one thing. And you do see kind of staring out the window, kind of trying to figure out what's what's happening. And also fiddling with them to try to see if it can be opened is a young woman 
she looks like a human woman with long red hair. Okay. I believe I've found Serena, but uh, I will press on. I'm going to look for um, any way to move up. Uh, if there's stairs, if there's not, then I'll just go for hallways. Um, not so concerned about like furniture or mm -hmm. anything like that, but it, it, I'm looking for um, any kinds of creatures or anything that looks like might, it might be a trap or possibly one of the, uh, the treasures that we're looking for. Okay. I mean, keep in mind, you're just sending this out to really view. You're not going to be able mm -hmm. to kind of manipulate anything or try to really check right. for traps. Um, but you do find a staircase where you find two doors in this room. One, you take a little quick peek in, looks like it's a bedroom of some sort. So you pop back out, go to the other uh, bedroom, and that's where you find a staircase. And that does lead upward. Let me just double check. So this is green. Dargos will ask while you're looking, what do you see through your eye? A room with large windows. I believe it is Serena inside of it. She's looking yeah, out if, the windows. If you guys pull back a little bit, like walk back from the actual entryway, you could probably, you could see these, these large windows. Okay. Okay. And from that room adjoining, there's a bedroom with a staircase. I, right now, I'm looking for the uh, the symbol of Ravenkind. In the North Peak Tower, Rictavio said. Yes. Yeah, so as you continue on your eye, it kind of goes up this small spiral staircase. And it does eventually. Let me just double. Go up into another peak. And from there. Mm -hmm. You can see that you're now on the, the rooftop itself. Okay. Is there now there are... It brings you into like another, another little uh, spire, basically. And from there, you kind of poke in and you see it kind of is divided into three or four different rooms. Really nothing of note here. Um, in the first one that you find, there's just like some cats just kind of chilling there. You poke around to the other room. It looks like a, like almost a workshop of sorts. And the third room... That brings you into a room. Kind of, again, it curves and follows the shape of the spire that you're on. And it seems to be pretty much empty, except for, it almost looks like a storage room of some sorts. It's filled with glass jars and bottles and things like that. As you continue on, that would bring you, yeah, okay, so now that would bring you um, to the top of another spire, and there is a little bridge that kind of um, connects a different tower, and going through that, it's a, again, it's larger, it's a larger spiral spare, uh, staircase, but in the middle of this is this glowing red glass-shaped heart. 
And as you continue up, you come to a room that kind of just looks run down, filled with cobwebs and dirt. Uh, da, da, da. And you can just see some bats kind of flittering in and out of this, uh, around this room. And in the center is a wood frame bed. It's fitted with leather restraints. And at the foot of the bed, of the bed is uh, a closed iron chest. There is a wooden ladder at the far end of the, the room. And that leads up to um, the, the door, the trap door basically is, is standing open now. And it leads up to the final floor in this peak. And it's just bats flittering everywhere. The, you can see guano covering the, the floor. And that's all that you see there. Okay. And is this uh, this tower is north from the other tower? You would assume. I was connecting the bridge. Okay. Nothing that looks like it might possibly be the symbol of Raven kind. Um, not that you. Know. So maybe that glass heart thing might have been it. I'm not going to tell okay. you if, if, hey, oh yeah, boom, there it is. Um, you're going to have to actually <laughs> go out and explore. But from what you're seeing right now, nothing is screaming, hey. Um, There's that no looks... like raven shaped symbol. No, unfortunately. Like no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Outside, it says right here, right <laughs> here. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that easy for you guys. Um, like I said, you will have yeah. to. I mean, even if you, even if I did point it out, you'd still have to try to traverse your way through the castle to get there. Yeah. Of course. Um, okay, oh, so I'm going to oh, take the oh, eye back to the room with the woman in it. Okay, while you're doing that, what's everyone else wanting to do? What are you guys doing while he's concentrating on the spell? I'm pacing, getting very impatient. Merrick's just keeping a watch for anything moving, anything dangerous. Oglig Ogle is doing the same situational awareness, just being vigilant, just waiting for the information before we make a decision. Yeah, okay. um, Dargos will do the same. However, he does want to cast on himself Sea Invisibility, which okay. will last for an hour in preparation for when we go in here to see if he picks up anything that's not visible with the naked eye. Sure, absolutely. And let me just make note of that. I'm also right, so we on Strat's location as well. Okay. You can just kind of feel him moving throughout the castle. Yeah. It doesn't look like or feel like he's going in any place. Um, like he's not lingering very long in any one place, but you can still feel him kind of moving, I would say. Oh, hold on. It's on this. I would say you can feel him in like the northeasterly part of the castle. Yeah. Knowing where he's at is making me very impatient. All right, so you brought the arcane eye back into the room with the woman. Now I'm going to try to head downward, um, try to find a route, hopefully to the room that we see in front of us um, as we're actually standing outside. Okay. You say this front door is open, correct? Yes, that front door is open. But um, there is a, a another set right in front of you that's closed off. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Well, Dargos does want to poke his head in just to see if he sees anything inside this entryway. Okay. Sure, I will do that. Merrick um, calls out, Careful, Dargos. Remember, Rectavio said there would be traps. I will be careful. I have given myself the ability to see invisible things, so I want to see what might be waiting here that's either visible or not to our eyes. All right. Let me pull your character in, Ryan. Okay. As soon as... Okay, there he is. There's, like, so much happening on this map, and you guys are all clustered together. <laughs> Let 
And for some reason, it is. Can you move your token out? Because I can't grab you. There, it's. Yeah. There you go. Thank yeah, you. I don't move, move away here. Okay, wait. Yeah, so. Oh, I know why. Duh. There we go. That's better. So this is the entryway that okay. um, you guys were able to see. And again, this is, you know, it's still dark. But as you move um, to this door, do you just open it? Uh, if it's closed, I don't want to open it yet. Okay, it is closed. I want to, I want to wait, before, wait until um, Anton is done scouting before I move any further ahead. Can I at least check to see if it's locked? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can check the check the handle to yeah. see if it if it is locked or not. Okay. Um you can tell that it is currently not locked. Okay. I'm going to report that to the others. This room is this entry room is empty, but we have an unlocked door leading into this castle. Go ahead and open the door, please, so that my eye will be able to come through or at least see through and I'll know I found the route back. Okay. Um, then I would like to, using my lit up uh, liar, I want to turn the handle and push it open with my liar, liar so that the light reveals what's inside, if it's dark or not. Okay. Um, as you push it open, I'll just move your token in so you can see. Sure. You can tell that uh, right away sure. it is not dark in there. It is actually a very well lit octagonal. Uh, shaped room, and I'll give you the official description of the room. Um, so cobwebs stretch between the four columns that are um, within the room that support the vaulted ceiling that's above you, and it's just kind of is this now just this dusty great uh, dome above you. Uh, there are torches in the iron sconces uh, along the wall that are lit. And the torches, the torchlight casts um, odd shadows across the faces of eight stone gar uh, gargoyles that are squatting motionlessly on the rim of the dome ceiling. Cracked and faded ceiling frescoes are covered by decay. And you see... Um, you can see that there is a staircase to the north mm -hmm. that kind of leads up and turns to sorry to the west. Mm -hmm. uh, there is um, a right directly across from you, of course, another set of closed ornate double doors, and then to the south there is a large hallway that opens opens up. But that's all that you're kind of able to see at this moment. Is everyone else following into the entryway? Yeah, I would follow. With them as well. Keep I like to cast question. Divine Sense. All right. Can I make First. an insight check when I look in here, point it at those golems to see if I can tell if there's anything going on with them? <clears throat> I'm going to say... Would it need to be a different not, type of check? Yeah, not... Um, an insight check per se. You can go ahead and make go ahead and make me an arcana check. Okay. That's what I was afraid of. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> oh that's, hey. that's a nat twenty. Right. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I I will say, given that you did get a nat twenty, that as you kind of look the gargoyles over, mm -hmm. you just for a split second, you swear you saw one kind of shift a little to get a better look at you. Okay, I'm going to relay back to them what I'm seeing with all these, you know, pillars and the tall do uh, domed room. And I'm going to finish by saying, and there are, how many, how many gargoyles did you say? Did you tell me how many? There's eight, right? There are eight. Yep, there I'm, are eight of them. I'm going to say... There are eight gargoyles at the top of this domed room, and I would bet you money these things are waiting for us to get closer. Okay, but going back to the arcane eye, so you finally get down to, um, 
you, you brought her, brought it down to where the, the girl was in the room. Uh, across from there, you kind of make a quick little turn and you do find a second staircase that goes down. And that leads you, let me just, it's hard to tell on the maps that I printed. But, so let me just pull it up real quick. That leads you, it continues down further, but you do get to a point where a door opens. Do you want to go through it? Or a door is visible? Um, I feel like I've gone down about far enough to be at ground level. Um, do you feel, is that what you asked? Yes. Um, you wouldn't really know because you haven't, it's, it's kind of disorienting going through that, that spiral staircase. So you're not entirely certain if you are or not yet, but okay. you're at least getting closer. No, I'll keep going down. Okay. All right. Where's my cheat sheet? I just want to see where it's going to drop you off at. Our plan to scout ahead is making Strahd go crazy. Okay. <laughs> um, I would say Toral would be able to gauge that Strahd's just at a pretty normal pace, meandering through the castle. So... And I would obviously let the party know down. kind of moving in his direction. Um, hold on. So this brings you down uh, your eye into a room that's pretty interesting. In the center of this room, it's, a, it's a, like a large rather larger, about 30 feet square. It has this really tall ceiling. In the center, there is a stone brazier that burns fiercely. And it has this tall white flame. And I want to make sure. So the rim of the, the brazier is carved with seven cup-shaped um, indentations spaced evenly around the circumference. Within each indentation is a spherical stone, twice the diameter of a human eyeball, and made of colored crystal. No two stones are the same color. And overhead, there's a wood-framed hourglass, as tall and wide as a dwarf. And it hangs about 10 feet above the brazier, suspended from the ceiling by thick iron chains. All the sand is stuck in the upper portion of the hourglass, uh, seemingly unmoving. And you can see that there's some script at the base of the hourglass. There are also two nine-foot-tall iron statues of knights on horseback, poised to charge with swords drawn, and they stand in um, alcoves facing each other. The stone brazier sits beneath them, or between them. Any visible exits other than the one I came through? Yes. Let me, actually, let me double check. For this, no. That okay. staircase ends in that I'll room. Go. I'll go back up the stairs and then All through right. the door that I passed by. Sure. Okay. And what's everyone else doing? Would we know from Rictavio's training and all the nature of gargoyles, like what triggers no. their behavior, what their weaknesses are, anything like that? No. Okay. Um, I don't want you to think he spent four years training you guys. It was kind of like, hey, this has got to happen now. Um, he has taken the woman he's been after for a long time. Um, I need people. And so he's given you like brief rundowns on hunting, you know, vampires itself. Um, and enough to kind of let you know that 
it's going to be a difficult fight. But he hasn't imparted all of his knowledge on you. And honestly, he was kind of a gruff, rude man anyway. He wasn't like the warmest. Like he's he's not your after school, you know, football coach or anything like that. He's he was just hiring you guys for a job. Um, since Merrick has Arcana, would he maybe have some information on the gargoyles? Since I'm proficient in Arcana, you can go ahead and roll. Sure. Um, while he's rolling, how how far? You say they're in, around the top of the room. How large is that area? So that area. Let me go back to it. I believe it was like twenty. Because I have a plan for um, starting yeah. off a fight with them, basically. I'm going to say, because it doesn't specify, and it might be in there, but... Yeah, so it reaches about 50 feet high. Uh, well, I guess my question is, how close are the uh, gargoyles to each other? Are, are they all oh, along? to each other. They're yeah. spaced evenly around the room. Okay. So what, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 diameter, like, room here. So it's kind of like in each each angle that the octagon is forming. Okay. That's where the gargoyles are kind of nestled in. Gotcha. And Thank you, you know what? Uh, now I see why you're asking. Yeah. There's, okay. there's a spell I was wanting to use, possibly if we start the fight. I just wanted to see how many, how many of them it would hit, basically. So... I didn't cast it yet, but I wanted to. I was hoping that would give the description of it, but it doesn't. Yeah. So, do you see them now? Yes. Thank you. Two, three, four, five. Six. Yep, I see eight gargoyles. Did we lose Doreen? Okay. Oh. What's everyone else going to do? Oof. Oh, you did your Arcana check. Hold on. Not good. Uh, and what did you roll? Uh, it was a 12. Hold on, I'm pulling it out here. <sighs> okay, so with the 12, Merrick. Okay, um, let me just show you what they look like. Ooh. So I would say with the 12, um, you know that often if they are like true gargoyles, not just um, inanimate stonework, that they do tend to be malevolent creatures and they enjoy inflicting pain upon their victims. Okay, so what's everyone else going to be doing? Uh, can I cast Divine Sense? Sure. And let's see. The first of many. Oh, uh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. What's the um, radius on that again? Let me check. And we're all in this octagonal room now, right? 
uh, I don't know. You guys haven't told me you moved in, uh, inward. Yes, if yeah, Dargos went in, then Merrick is going to stay feet. close by. Okay. Anton, can you move while you're doing this RK9? Yes. Okay. Because I would not have left your side. Merrick looks to everyone. Shh. Okay. So as far as your divine sense, you are not picking up any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet. So the eye... Remind me, you're going back up, is that correct? Yep, to the door that I passed by. Okay. So as you go through that door, again, you come into um, a well-lit room. It looks to be a study of some sort. There's a fire that's ablaze in the hearth, and there's books lining the walls uh, plus you know some nice little cushions and let's see where you would get out <laughs> of course that's the one that fell all right, so there are two double doors to the east, and there is one door to the south and one to the north. Which one do you want to go to first? South. South? Mm. All right, that will bring you... into a room that looks like a dining hall. And there's just one, um, there's two exits here, both to the east and west. I'll go west. Okay, uh, that brings you into a room that has two double doors to the north. And this looks to be like a, a bath chamber of some sort. Okay, I'll go through the doors to the north. All right, that brings you into a bedroom. And it, the doors, was um, only the doors that you came through and the doors to the east. Okay, and if I go east, does that take me back to the room I was in? It takes you I back to the, the room. Okay, so I'll go yep. north this time. All right, that um, brings you into kind of, it turns, um, and it, it's a hallway that branches out to the west. It kind of joins into that rather large spiral staircase, and you can see the glow of red light coming from above. And there is, to the west, a large hallway with um, like alcoves lining that hallway. I'll go through the hallway. Okay. So you just see that there's um, like the dark al um, alcoves. And if you continue on, it leads you to a staircase that brings you out into the parapets of the castle. Hmm. Okay. Now that I'm, out, I'm on the parapets, where in, where are these rooms I was just exploring in relation to the front door of the castle? Uh, they would be... Mm -hmm. 
they're going to be facing obviously in every, the west and the entrance is towards the south okay so they're north from where we're at what's north from where you're at the rooms that i was exploring before i came out onto the battlements Like the rooms, like the study that you're in? Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it's, it was more in the center. There was, like, there were the, the rooms to the, the north that you went through. Okay. Well, I think, uh, I think I've got the route to the, uh, the North Peak Tower more or less figured out. Just have to go up from where we're at. I think it's time we uh, move on after we've dealt with these gargoyles. So you're telling us we need to head up these stairs to our left, is that correct? I believe that's correct. I think we, we need to, to fight these the gargoyles then. I don't uh, think it's wise to leave them behind. Dungeon Master question. If we take these stairs to the north, mm -hmm. as we're climbing up, how much closer do we get to the gargoyles? Like, we're going to be obviously closer to them than we are now, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. At least the two, the two to the north. Yeah, so those two in the north. Um, so the staircase leads up and out of the room that you're in. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, you'll get a little bit closer, but you're also going to be eventually putting some distance between you as you continue going up the staircase. Anton, you want us to fight them here? In this small space? Because keep in mind, there's a dome over this room that you guys are in right now. Turo looks at the party and just says, these are here only as a distraction. He gave us a, a time limit, and he's only trying to waste our time. We must move. I agree. Time is not on our side. If these things come at our back, we must be prepared, though. And we fight and we them. We will vigilant. I'll take the rear then, just in case, and use my horn of blasting on them. Very well. Understood. Then I believe Anton should guide us with Oleg in front to help guard against what we may run into. I'm actually going to have Victor go in front. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> All right. So you guys are... Let me just zoom in so I can see everyone. Um, so you should be able to move your tokens, at least in this area, as you see fit. Let me know if you can't go through to the staircase. And walk quietly. <laughs> um, Merrick is going to be the last one up, and as they're moving, he's constantly watching the gargoyles, even like walking backwards up the steps a bit just to see if there's any kind of movement. Okay. Make a perception check for me, please. Uh... Ugh. Bad rules. Get them out now. Yeah. Need <laughs> <laughs> good ones later. You don't think you see any movement. Man, I always have high perception characters, and this one doesn't. I gotta get used to it. All right. So as you move Victor forward, he just kind of looks back. Um, <laughs> nothing has happened. How far in front is he? You should be able to see his token. The, like, what? Oh, Anton, what? That's like, what, 10 feet? You're having him walk in front of us? Okay. About that, yeah. Okay. Oh, no, Victor. <laughs> okay, so as you guys make your way around this corner, <clears throat> um, you see that the massive staircase, it rises to a landing that's about 25 feet. 20 feet wide by 40 feet long. There are stone arches that support the ceiling, and they're covered with um, frescoes about 20 feet 
overhead. And dust is kind of floating in the air here as you guys move your way through. Um, at each end of the south wall, a staircase rises into darkness. Between the staircase are twin alcoves, each one containing a standing suit of armor covered with dark stains. Each suit of armor clutches a mace, the business end of which is shaped like a dragon's head. Words engraved on the arches above the suits of armor have been scratched out. And it doesn't seem like anything, no gargoyles followed us in. No gargoyles uh, have followed you. Okay. We should try to move very quietly. I.e., we should stealth, maybe? So I can uh, cast Pass Without a Trace on everybody. Excellent. So that gives everybody plus 10 to their stealth roll. Nice. Okay. okay. Can we stealthy from here, Dungeon Master? If you would like to. Where oh, are you yes. I'm oh, sorry, what's that? So where are you going? Uh, wherever... Victor takes us. <laughs> Wherever Victor leads, yeah. There's two staircases of that, that's correct? Yes, there are two staircases. They both are going up about 20 feet. Oh my god. Do we have any, just based on a, just looking at it, do we see that if they merge? Or do they you seem to go in different directions? Okay. You can't tell from where you're at. These, I would say if you're just kind of like, at the base, looking up. Ryan eyeballing it. Kind of just go in the same direction from your viewpoint right now. Okay, so we're going whichever way Victor goes, right? Yeah. I follow Victor. Yeah. Follow Victor and I'll follow you. <laughs> Did everyone roll stealth? Oh, are we supposed to roll stealth? Okay, sorry. You might as well, yeah, might as well be sneaky. I'm not, that's, oh, that's worse than me. All right. <laughs> Still a 12. <laughs> yeah, so everybody's over, who's over 10 is over 20, I guess, right? That's not going to roll as Victor's. I guess it still uses my name. Okay, no problem. So he gets the plus 10 as well, because I would have added him to that. No problem. All right, so are you guys going up? Because if so, I got to move your tokens. It looks like we're going, going up. up. Yep. Yeah, let's oh, go up. Where are we going, Anton? Trying to reach the battlements, and from there, I'll know the rest of the route. All right, actually. We trusted your sense of direction, Anton. I'm already turned around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh. think we have to worry about finding our way out of here. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one-way trip. Oh my god! All right, I'm hoping there's a quick and easy way to do this, and I think I'll have done it correctly. Oh, close enough. So as you guys make your way. Um, up the staircase. Again, I kind of moved your tokens to kind of all fit mostly within there. Uh, Victor is probably still out front, so that kind of makes sense as well. I'm still I should move you guys. guys. I know. I, okay. I'm i on it, slowly but surely. All right. Cool. Excellent. There we go. So this room opens up clearly into this really large it's like a throne room. Courtyard, I guess yeah. you would kind of call it. Okay. Um, so it's this great, great hall. Um, well, dim light from the courtyard, you know, outside, falls into this great hall through the broken glass and iron latticework of a large window on the west wall. Um, this immense room is a place of chilly, brooding darkness. There are empty iron sconces that dot the walls um, completely unlit and hundreds of dust laden cobwebs drape the hall, hiding the ceiling from view. Directly across from the window 
stand a set of double doors in the east wall. Farther south, a single door also leads to the east wall. Um, staircases at both ends of the north wall lead down. That's the landing that you guys just came from. And at the far southern end of the hall is a large wooden throne that stands atop a marble dais. dais. I can never say that word right. Mm -hmm. um, the high-backed throne faces south, away from most of the room. Can I tell if there's fuel or tinder in the sconces? Um, there are not. Okay. Can we see from here if someone is sitting in the throne with its back to us? You can make a perception check. All I right. will do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be bad. <laughs> Can't wait for combat. <laughs> um, so there is not someone sitting in the other room. And in fact, Toral, you would still know that Strahd is now in like more of the south eastern part of the castle. Okay. Did we all know that you cast that spell on him? Jerome? Yeah. Jerome? yeah, I would have told everybody. What is he doing? He's south of here. Can I tell if he is... We just went up a flight of stairs. Can I tell if he's still ground floor or if he's up? Like, Can I tell you know that Z-axis? I would say, what does the actual verbiage of your spell say? It says... Let's go back to it. You sense the direction to the creature's location as long as it is within a thousand feet of you. So, I mean, the direction to me is like cardinal directions. Yeah, right. um, so you want to be able to tell what level in the castle he's at. But I can tell how close he is. So, like, if he is like directly underneath us, I'd be able to tell if he was. Is that correct? Does it say close? Since the direction the creature is moving, you know the direction of the movement. It does not. Okay. So then I would say no. Okay. Good to know. What are you guys going to do? Looks like I'm going to lead the way to these double doors as if he has any idea where they're leading. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> do I do I trust Anton? Can I do an insight check to see if he knows where he's going? Insight check. No. With how long right, he so had that eye out, I hope we have some sort of idea. <laughs> I think um I I will tell you, Anton, um, if this is a room that your eye has previously been in, in case my descriptions weren't enough. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is not one of those rooms. So you're going to go through the double door? Yes. All right. Um, so as you open it, you see that it actually, it's a very narrow hallway, and there's another set of double doors completely um, opposite of this set. If you poke your head in, you see that the hallway uh, is about, what, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, about 40 feet long. And on either side of the north and south walls, there's skeletons hanging from the walls, like decoration. I'll bring you guys in just so you can see. I'd like to kind of keep an eye out for traps as we're walking here. I know it's a little, it's a little tight, but that's mostly just so you guys... Um, <laughs> like an elevator <laughs> <laughs> are they hanging by their necks by their feet how are they hanging they are hanging um kind of like their arms up ah. um like very strategically placed manacles um iron you know uh, rods are kind of holding them in again it's you get the feeling it's more for decoration <laughs> 
We'll press on through the doors. Okay. So this, I'll move you all through. Well, hold on, maybe. Is Victor the one that's actually pushing the doors open? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this brings you into a 20 foot high hall. It has a dark vaulted ceiling draped again with more cobwebs. And you can hear this low moan that seems to travel the length of the corridor as it rises and falls, intoning sadness and despair. But you do see the doors to the east, the double doors. I look for traps. Absolutely. Do I, um, investigation. Can I tell where the moan hey. is coming from? Whoa, God. Double. I wasted two. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Wow. You use it on a door? Well done. <laughs> Um, I'm going to say, because it is a natural 20, uh, you don't find any traps in here. However, as you're kind of perusing and looking around, you do find part of the wall doesn't quite look the same. Excellent. It's well hidden, but you're able to spot a secret door yeah. within the wall itself. Mm. Yeah, I point that out. Can we tell where this moaning is coming from? Um, give me... Go ahead and give me a perception check. Okay. <laughs> there you go. 20. Nice. Okay. <laughs> you can be figure out, as, as you're just kind of looking to the east and the west and the doors, it dawns on you that that moaning is just the wind. Oh. Tricks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, I use this in my performances to create ambiance. <laughs> the same effect. Don't be fooled by the wind. Should we check this door? A secret? Yes. I think that, uh, I think that's why. Step aside so the meat bag can yeah. open it. Yeah. <laughs> is your arcane eye? Yeah, uh, let's Oh, it, it's still there. I'm just, it's just where I left it. Uh, it lasts for an hour. I wonder if we should um, go through this. So I guess we need, uh, it can't go through walls or anything. We'd still have to open the door first. Oleg, I can go ahead and open AKA it Galen, mm -hmm. at this point, you get um, some pinging with your divine sense. Some undead. Uh, do I get a direction? Coming from basically the way that you came. From back? Mm hmm. Behind us. Oof. And uh, Toro, you would recognize that Strahd also seems to be coming back to your part of the castle. Okay. Ready. I tell everybody, ready yourselves. I turn to Merrick because he seems to be the farthest back, and I just go, Someone's coming up behind us. Be ready. Can I look out the door? Can you look out the door? Like behind us, so we, the way oh, we yeah. came. Sure, absolutely. Do I see Strahd or anything else coming? Not yet. Who has the invisibility? <clears throat> I'm um, Dargos has the invisibility on right now. Is there a way to bar the doors from inside this hallway? No. Um, Should we close the doors? And take up positions. Let's try to get and through the fact, secret door. As you say that, it. Merrick, the door is slammed shut. How'd you do that? All of them, including the secret door. Oh, was it open? Yeah. I assumed if you're noticing it's there, it would at least be a little bit ajar. And you'd be like, oh, this is here. But you guys didn't really fully open it to investigate it. Okay. With these uh, yeah. doors slamming shut, do I notice anything with my C invisibility? Like anything in this room with us? Um, 
I won't even make you roll because right now there is nothing else in that room. Okay. But you guys. Okay. Anton's gonna try to open this door up again, the secret door. Okay. What is it made out of? Is it stone, like the wall? Yes, it's it's stone. And is you it can locked? Tell that it's locked. Seems to be can locked. Someone, can someone pick the lock? No, I cannot. Uh, uh, let's see if I have a skill to do that. Um, I don't think I do. I can use magic or brute force. Unless I want to use my sleight of hand, which is not great. I don't have a way to get through. Uh, or uh, Anton's going to try to use his mage hand cantrip to see if he can open this door. Okay. That door is also locked. And both Oleg and Toril, you would recognize that the undead, that Strahd, is even closer. Okay. I'm going to uh, engage with the spirit ancestor and do the host spirit where I bring the spirit into my body and take on the additional temporary hit points and all the other things that go with it. I won't go through the list, but I'm just uh -huh. readying myself for battle. Okay. Merrick says he can use knock to open one of the doors, but which one? Secret door. Secret door. Okay. So he casts his spell. Okay. Uh, do you mean to put that in the chat? Uh, yes, please, if you don't mind. Sure. Just, um, you know, so people can see and know and not to mention your other people. So mm -hmm. the secret door does open. Everybody. And I immediately just start telling them. So does oh. all of the other doors. Uh, I immediately turned and looked down the hallway to see if Strahd is behind the doors that just opened behind us. They fly open, and you do see him standing there with four other creatures that look at you hungrily. As far as that secret door, real quick, if you take a quick uh, glance down there, you will see that it opens into a 10 by 20 foot shaft. Uh, it's filled with machinery, and uh, except for a very, very small space uh, between the stone gears and the iron chains and pulleys, um, there's really no, no other space for you. Because no beyond, beyond the gears and that machinery is just an open shaft. Beyond all that. So there is a, we can move past that if we need to. You can to. move past it and fall down an open shaft if you would uh, like. <laughs> Does the shaft continue upward or just down? Both. Okay. And at this point, Strahd just kind of says, it's been an hour already and... What do you have to show for it? This Chaos Orb. I cast Chaos Orb at Strahd and the creatures. Okay. I'm just gonna... the How close are they all together? Yeah, right now. And it's... I'm going to try to see if I can at least give Ryan um, some view of this, but I don't think I can without you seeing everything of his. Are they in the, on, on the room to the left? Is that correct? They are, yes. Yeah, so they're the room to the left, to the west, through the two double doors that you just came through. They're in that large room with the throne that's okay. facing away from the rest of the room. Um, I, if I drag out my character, maybe you could put a second version of me in there just so people can see it possibly. Okay. Sure. That can be a, a fake me that's a audience member, I guess. Or or pull his normal character in. Yeah. Okay, oh, I'll yeah. pull Evan Yeah, that works. I'm just seeing his face anyway. <laughs> so let me also and get rid of that one I just made. Unless I can, I don't think I can delete it.
And let me know when you want me to roll for that spill. Ah, well, there we go. I see. We'll have to roll initiative. You can't yes. get a surprise attack on him. <laughs> All right. Uh, because he was watching you guys and he declared himself. So, uh, yeah, so everyone will have to roll for favor. Roll initiative. Okay. okay. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Mm. Man, my rolls. <laughs> How'd you get 17? Oh, yeah. My my initiative says 3.15. I have no idea why it says that, but that's what's on my sheet. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Cool. It does. I And I was trying to look at why, and I was just like, you know what? I don't care. So uh, we'll say 17, uh, I guess. <laughs> the, hat. the hat gives you the extra point one. That's right. Uh -huh. It's very dapper. It is. Okay. Where's my Strahd sheet? Oh, no. Oh, I didn't have my shoot. So yeah, mine yeah, didn't send for some first. reason. Yeah, That's okay. you, have That's okay. first and then roll. you have to have your token selected, I think. Right? Yeah, you gotta select the token, but um, you can also edit it within the turn order itself. Yeah, so oh, okay. This is actually a seven honor system. Oh, yours is a seventeen point one five. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see if I do this. If I'll show up on there now. Okay, good. Now I can change it to the right number. <laughs> 15.5 to no, 17. <laughs> 17. All right. There we go. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> we should be the ones. Yeah. Oh, I, hope, I hope Strahd doesn't die right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could, our other campaign's done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So hold on. I have one, two, three, four. Oof. You know what? I don't think he's gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To hear that. So, firstly, if everyone can give me their official, did you guys update all your numbers here? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's an extra Dargos in that room, hiding in the corner. <laughs> he's not the real one. He's a fake. Oh. <laughs> All right, so got it. Okay, just making sure. All right, so opening roll for Strahd here. Okay, and I'll put him in here. But Connor, you will be going first. Uh sure. <laughs> we both rolled 19 oh, sure. first. <laughs> well, I have Connor as 20. Uh, he might be, yeah. Uh, I had a three. Shows Anton has 19. I see Anton with a three. Yeah, I see oh, Anton with a three as well. Ulrich. I'm getting rid of you guys then. <laughs> Oleg, Dargos. Did you guys roll from your main? No. From your current? I messed that up, so I had to change mine manually. But mine's correct, and it's 17. Who am I missing? Oleg. Okay. Oleg, Dargos, Toro, Merrick, Anton. What about Victor? Does Victor? He goes at my initiative. He goes at yours as well? Okay. Yep. And Evander, you're in here, but that's... I can get rid of your actual thing in the turn order, right? Yeah, I don't see Evander on the turn order. I mean, I see I Dargos. See Dargo. I see Dargos slash Evander, but I think that's just... Okay. Oleg, Dargos, Toro, Merrick. That's very strange. Okay, let me just put... Oh, and... So, Oleg, you yes. would be going first. With the exception of 
Strahd being really cool, he has these um, layer actions. So that goes at the top of the initiative round at 20. Okay. And so he can take certain actions um, that fall under layer actions during that time. And then you can go. But let me first get the vampire spawn in here. OK, so now we all should be good, Oleg. OK, OK, OK. So firstly, what he's going to do you know, I will say just for fairness, that lair action would be um, that opening up the doors to reveal himself. So, Oleg, you go. I have no idea what actually I'm seeing because I'm still in this room. Um, You're right, but... Um, what, what would I be seeing through the, the two doors? Through the two doors, you are seeing Straw just kind of standing there. And some vampire spawns, um, they're very kind of decrepit and gaunt, very, very thin. Um, they're salivating uh, at seeing you. And you're seeing them across that hallway. And you can, at, with your vision, you can see about two of the spawns. At least two? Surrounding Strahd. Yeah, and from what I can tell, they're about 10 feet away from you. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, about 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Oh, Strahd 25. is okay. pretty much right in your line of sight, 25 feet away. He has a spawn to right next to him to the north, and then one right behind him about five feet further back. Okay. Um, I don't, I probably don't want to go into the room. Okay. So I am going to do compelled duel against him and see if I can force him into our room. Okay, do it. Nice. <laughs> uh, do I have to roll anything? See, the creature Let's has to see. make a wisdom saving save. throw. A wisdom yeah. saving throw. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to use my special straw dice that I bought. <laughs> Don't let me down, straw d20. <laughs> Man. I feel like he's going to be really good at this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it still comes down to the rolls, so that's a 14. Huh? What's the DC for this? 14. Oh. oh so he just makes it then. Oh. Mm -hmm. oof, oof, oof. And he just kind of smiles and kind of just shrugs his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and taunts you and says, it'll take more than that. And... Pretty close. <laughs> Just want you to know that, <laughs> Strahd. <laughs> I was really close. Do not get so cocky. And he's going to go ahead and take one of his legendary actions at this point to kind of move back a little bit further into the room. behind the spawn that was behind him previously. So just for clarifications, because I know we don't, we have some new er, players here. So he gets three legendary actions and I can only do one legendary action option at a time and only at the end of another creature's turn. So he took that at the end of Oleg's turn. Okay. okay. And I can regain that action at the start of my turn. So, um, anything else, Oleg? You still have movement if you want to move. I want to try to get as close to the door without going in into the other room. Okay. To put myself between whatever is here to get a better look of if there's anyone else on the sides and okay. the rest of the group. All right. So, is in this hallway, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'm to assume they're right. relatively close behind me. Yeah, so again, both of these door, these double doors are wide open, and now that you're at this one, you can mm -hmm. see that there are two more spawn in this this room with Strahd. In this room? Yeah, so, well, not where you are, but in the room with Strahd. Oh, gotcha, so he okay. He has four vampire spawns total with him. Okay, so I would just turn back and I just, I would just go, four more. 
All right. Um, then Evandor, a.k.a. Dargos, you're up. Um, it looks like Oleg has moved out of the range that I could get up and cast heroism on him. Heroism on him. I would assume that Victor is probably going to be sent in uh, to fight these things. So I'm going to move up to Victor mm -hmm. and actually cast uh, Heroism. Let me click that. I assume I could do this on an ally who's an undead. Well, he's a construct technically. So as long as there's this, no... Does that count as a creature? It doesn't, it doesn't look like there's any anything against that. So yeah, you can cast it on him. Okay. And that is a spell slot of one. Okay, so that's going to give uh, Victor uh, immune to being frightened, and it gains temporary hidden points equal to my spell casting ability modifier at the start of each of its turns. So my... Uh, I think it's is spell DC... Spell save DC no, 15, no, or... Spell attack bonus, so that's seven. So every turn he gets seven. Seven temporary, temporary hit points to Victor every turn, yes. Nice. That's a good spell. Go tank him, it. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I pat him Are on the gonna... back. I should have pat him on Are the ass. Get him there. Good game. <laughs> what, what was that? I'm sorry, Doreen? Are you do any other movement? Or... Um, I do want to move, uh, so that I moved about ten feet. I'm going to move another... 10 feet just so I can have eyes on where Oleg is and what he's fighting. Okay. So about right there, a couple, 10 feet from the door, pretty much. <sighs> okay. I'm so nervous here. Uh, <laughs> like, I want to make sure I kill you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make sure. It's Strahd's I mean first turn. That's the goal. Um, so yeah, so now it is Strahd's turn. And Oleg is in the room with Strahd? No, Oleg no. is in the hallway that stands between the room you guys are in and Strahd is in. So, I just want to make sure I have this spell correct. Okay. He's just going to move around the spawn. It's kind of sitting in between the two that are in your direct line of sight, Oleg. Mm -hmm. But he's just going to be just a little bit offset, off center from you. So he's, whereas right now your character token is in the like the, in front of the south door of the double doors, he's like directly in the center. And he's, you see him move his hands in a quick little flourish and he pushes forward and you just see this ball of fire blow past you into oh, the wow. room oh, behind you. Behind me? Oh. Yes. Into our room. Yes. So. Can I see Straw doing this? You can. Counterspell. <laughs> uh, actually, I would say Oleg's probably blocking your sight right now. Oleg! <laughs> but, okay, so it's a 20 foot radius centered at the point. Um, I guess that I choose. Is that right? Yeah, a point that I choose within range, which you guys definitely are within range. So it's going to be centered. Pretty much right in between Victor and Merrick. Fix my cameras here real quick. Uh, <laughs> I know why he's doing that. <laughs> oh, wait, it's left. Is that why? Yeah, like basically about there. So 5, 10, 15. 20, so that's also going to get you, Evandor. Okay. Uh, let's Five, see what I 10, have. 
15, 20, and it should get Turo, Tasso, and Anton Connard. It's the only person. Oh, wait, you have two in here. Which is your... Yeah, sorry, the one in the really back far right corner is not the real one. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oof, thank goodness. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> no, I didn't run around <laughs> way and hide in the corner like Ulrich yet. <laughs> <laughs> Burn! I love it. <laughs> so each of you need to make a deck saving throw for me. Okay. Uh, Turl, question. Do you have that spirit up that gives us... Does this help us with saving throws? I'm looking right now. Yeah, um... absolutely check those, those things because... Oh god, it's bad so far. Yeah. <laughs> it gives, uh... I have to get some no, more details. Not for this one. Not for this? All right. Oh my gosh. All so right. this was a what saving throw? I'm sorry, dexterity uh, save. save. Which you guys are mostly pretty good at. Uh, I don't know. These aren't looking great no, unless we have all advantage. Bad. <laughs> We're mostly all bad at it. It's all bad. <laughs> hey, it's it's not going to be that bad. All right. We're all just on fire. It's no big deal. All right. Just a little fire. <laughs> did you guys all fail that? Uh, Probably. Looks like yeah, it. I'm sure we all did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so his... Yeah. <laughs> Y'all... Is, is it save like four? Because... Wait, here, lots of dice. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. It's not, it's not that bad. I rolled a, quite a few ones and twos. Oh, good. Yeah, quite a few. So, six, seven, eight... 9, 10. So 15. Whew. Right, is this 8? Uh, no, hold on, that's only 6. So 15. Uh, and two more. 15. So then 23 damage total. Okay. To, to everybody, or is that sp that's not split between us, right? Uh, oh, no. A target takes 8d6 damage on a failed save, or half on a successful one. The fire spreads around any corners, ignites flammable objects. So you all take each 23 damage. Oh yeah. boy, okay. Just for temporary hit points. 23, 47, minus 23. And at this point, Strahd looks at you, Oleg, and says, oh, actually, hold on. I should have been. Time is still passing. If you would like, I can offer another boon. Or I can keep killing your comrades. Those you are my choices. In the background. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? He's talking to you, Galen. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, as I would ask... Um, are those the choices that you're granting me? You're right. Um, you should know all the choices. The third one is, I have my children go in and rip their bodies apart. Your choice. So I can, for a moment, sedate your hunger? Hmm. And you grant me and then do what? You just walk on your merry way away? I will. But we're here to kill you. You do understand that. Oh, I know. This is fun, isn't it? The choice is yours. Make it fast. I will not allow my friends to be victimized. I will rush in directly into him. Well, it's not technically your turn yet. When um, it does. You know whose turn it is? The vampire spawn. <laughs> the children. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so, they are going to... Let me pull up their stats. Where did I put them? They, I'm having them all go on the same turn order because I don't feel like keeping track of each huh? one of them. Makes sense. Uh, pop, pop. There we are. So they're going to, they have 30 feet of movement. Let me just do that. There we go. Get that out of the way. So the first one now, again, Galen, because of your position in here, mm -hmm. if 
any of them move past you, of course, you can still get your attack of right. opportunity uh, until it gets maybe to the point where you're surrounded. Essentially, it'll run, sure. Yeah. But um, Straw just kind of gives you a little shrug and says, so be it. Their blood will be on your hands. And he makes a little motion, and immediately the vampire spawn just clamor through this door. And one of them kind of gets close to you. This other one is going gonna, is gonna to move past you. So you can make an attack of opportunity against that one. And you know what? I should give them colors. Yay! Oh my Sorry, sometimes I can't see chat because I'm like moving a lot of stuff in. So feel free to let me know what you get when you roll. Uh, 18. All right, roll. Yes, that will hit. Roll that damage. Seven. Okay. All right, let me just move that. Okay, and I'm going to give this one a color too. Blue. All right, and the pink one is going... Well, this one didn't take her full movement. It's going to come here. I'm going to move in here. And then this one, 5, 10, 15, 20, Oh, the pink one. 30 can move there. So the pink, um, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the pink one did go through. You can take your attack against her or him. Okay. Fortunately, they're just moving a little bit too quick for you. So they got through. Okay. And they're each going to go ahead and just attack the first thing that they see. Okay. Which happens to be Dargos Oleg and Dargo. Yeah. I'm not long for this world, I think. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah, question, Dungeon Master. Wait, so those were two opportunity attacks that Oleg yeah. got? Oh, yeah. do we get more than one per turn? Yeah, normally that's your reaction. You only get one reaction per turn. Uh, I'll you. allow it. I'm throwing you guys a little extra boom here okay. <laughs> he, he only hit one of them so you know <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. okay so we'll first do the pink against dargos mm -hmm. aka okay. Evander, aka rand aka ryan <laughs> uh, aka about to die yeah. <laughs> walking. dead man walking that's oh, right yeah. okay um I don't want to do the bite. We'll just do the claws and see if it hits. Uh, oh my God. Jesus. Oh, oh God. <laughs> All right. Don't, don't pay attention to that damage yet because that is a natural 20. Yeah. So they're normal. Oh my God. Getting Ooh, destroyed, okay. man. I'm nervous. Oh. <laughs> the spirit of straw is messing with us. The only thing I got going for me is that I am resistant to necrotic, but I don't know if that's, I don't think this is going to be necrotic if they're slashing me. No, this is, yeah, it's just going to be a slashing damage. <laughs> oh boy. So 2d4 plus 3 is the normal. Um damage done here oh man you might die actually hold on it's gonna be a quick run for uh for old uh for dargos let me, let me roll, let me roll oh. damage here i did not know i was getting in range of every single enemy in the game when i walked 10 feet forward uh. okay so that's 18 damage there okay almost uh, so that means I have six left. But we still have, um... Yeah, another. <laughs> so, like, I have, I have to put it aside me wanting to be nice. 
Well, because... all four spawns going at the same time is kind of screwing us right now. Yeah, um, and because they also I... get a multi-attack. Pink oh. still has one more attack against you. Okay. But, oh. but I will go ahead and just use that, um, instead of re-rolling again, I'll just use that 11 that's currently in the claws. So that's total 17 to hit. Wait, no? Let me double. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Six plus zero. That no. So it would. Yeah. I don't know. My my AC is fifteen. So I don't know. Yeah, that second roll they rolled a five, oh, and then no, the other six. No. Yeah, I see it now. So that would just be a total of eleven. Okay, so I would okay. shrug off the second attack, I guess. Okay. Barely. Well, here comes a red attack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh god, twenty-four. Oh my god. All right. Yeah, I'm pretty Stud. much I'm pretty much dead. So is that ten oh, so that'd be right. ten damage, so I'm at negative four. Uh, you're a vampire. Ooh, blood spurt. <laughs> Yeah, so you are currently unconscious. And you can hear um, Shrod's chuckle echoing through the, the hall as you everything goes black. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that for the red. Mm, yeah, okay, fine, I'll do that. But we still have orange and blue, so real quick. Orange against Oleg. Oh my god. Oh man. Come on. <laughs> You're doing it, it on not, purpose. I'm not budging these guys. Is like, there a hacker in the stream? What's going on? Yeah. Come on. Come on. For, for Strahd, I will roll everything over here, but for oh these little peons, you can see what they do. I don't care about that. Oh man. This is oh, so bad. <sighs> hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it doesn't seem to help, does it? <laughs> so that's 16 damage there. I mean, crits are going to be bad, but they're not going to happen that often. Shoot. Okay. And plus, Oleg has HP for days. That's another 10 damage to him, though. So how much in total, please? Mm. All right. Um, eight. Mm -hmm. 26 total. Okay. And now the blues turn. Mm -hmm. We're going to mix it up a little bit. We're gonna, they're going to try to bite you since, uh, you know, yeah. they like to eat. <laughs> okay. But that's an 11, which I don't think is going to no, do for you. Okay, so you just kind of like sh like shove him in in the face and shrug him off. Uh, Tasso, what would you like to do? All right, so one, two, three, four. Um, yeah. So it looks like the closest I can get. One, two, three, four, five. So I'd like to get as close to these as possible. Okay. And then how far away am I from uh, Oleg at this point? You are about 5, 10, 15, technically 20 feet away, but there is a vampire spawn in between you guys. Yeah. Not, not just the red one. There's another one. So I am going to kneel down next to Dargos and slam my fist into the ground and spend one of my spirit points to circle again spirits, and I'm going to call out undead. And so anything within a 30-foot radius of myself becomes um, basically a ward against undead. So okay. they need to make a DC 15 save, uh, wisdom save. DC 15 wisdom save. Uh, the undead, the vampire spawn, yes. you mean? Yeah, all, any, any undead within that 30 foot radius of myself. 
of yourself. Yep. Five. Yeah, five. What happens? 15, 20, 25. Oh, Strahd yeah, is just out of reach of that. If they fail, um, they're repelled from my presence for one minute. Okay. And have to spend their action running away. <laughs> Well, I mean, I would have, but my initiative was terrible. So. Okay. And what type of save is it? I'm sorry. Uh, wisdom. DC 15 wisdom. All right. What is their wisdom? Mm, could be better. So the first one is a 12. Okay. So that that's going to be the red. And you said that's a fail, right? Correct. Yeah. So I want to mark him so we don't forget him. Where is... We'll just use this one. Broken Skull, he's afraid of you. The second one is a 17. That's pink. That'll save. Orange, 17. That'll save. And... Blue is 16. Dang it. Okay, so three of them saved. <laughs> All right. But this one has to move away from you, correct? On its turn, yeah. It has to spend its, its turn okay. moving away. And with that, actually, that's, that's it. Um, anything else? Um, I th think that is it. Um, actually, as okay. a bonus action, I'm going to cash a lately on my um, quarterstaff. You got it. Yeah. Um, so he actually regained that legendary action. I tried to get and... away from Grand, sorry. <laughs> oh, like you can see that Straw just kind of glides past you, and he just kind of gives you a knowing smile as you see him moving north towards the staircases that you guys came down. Mm -hmm. um, where, where, where you guys came from, actually, not down. Okay. Let's back out to the group that looks like Strat is moving. And Merrick, it's your turn. Okay, Merrick, after being annihilated by that fireball, is like, Normally, Merrick seems very steadfast and confident. The fire has completely terrified him, and he's making this horrible moaning, like, Aah! but he shrugs it off enough to concentrate. He's going to attack the vampire that's standing over Dargos's body. He's going to cast Chaos Bolt at second level. Okay. At which color? Uh, pink. <laughs> that pink. damn pink one. <laughs> um, okay. Chaos Bolt. So. I'm just going to roll its first level, and then I'll add the damage afterwards, I guess, if that's easier for the second okay. level. Okay, uh, that's uh, fine. I just also want you to be aware, in case you're not able to see it, that um, of the vampire spawn, the only one that has any damage is the red one. Because I know some people like to focus oh. their damage. It's up to you. Oh, that's taken damage, you said. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Merrick, is he just sees that's the closest threat to... Um, to Dargo. Dargo okay. is going to do that. Oh, let's me actually cast at level two. Let's see what this does. Oh, that didn't do anything. Okay. <laughs> oh, it did. Okay. Yeah. Um... <laughs> All right. Um, that, no, didn't quite do what I wanted it to. So then I can do this. This should be hopefully better. Why is it doing this? It's not doing that. Well, basically, it's 2d8 plus 1d6. Should I just roll that from the, the roller? Is it on your core sheet in the actions area? Oh, you know what? I did make... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me try that. It should cast You it will too. still have to... Before you do the damage, you'll have to do the spell... spell of the yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yes, this is all the stuff I typed in earlier. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So, oh yeah, that's that's gonna hit. Pull two d8s plus one d6, and then choose one 
um, yes. to have that particular damage. Okay. Do, do, do. Um, so this is an eight and a three. So that's thunder and fire. I will do fire damage against this. And because it's second okay. level, I can add a d6. So 12 plus three, that's 15 fire damage on pink. Woohoo! Nice. There we go. Okay. I'm worried about little things. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, and because of my regeneration, I get one health point back at the beginning of my turn. Yep. Um, and you can just kind of hear it hiss uh, as the fire hits it and the hair, whatever little bit is left, is now singed and it smells terrible in here. But still uh, standing. It's, oh yeah. It's still oh. pretty, it's looking pretty strong. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's not what I want to hear, but okay. <laughs> um, um, and then movement. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a couple steps back here, and that will be it. Okay. Anton Connard, what are you doing? Okay, so I'm going to send my owl to fly up the shaft and tell me what it sees. Ooh, nice. Oh, you only have six seconds, but it can do that during oh, yeah, your time. It's going to start, at least. And then uh, I'm going to tell Victor to pull... Um, Let's see the names. Who's our downed comrade That's, there? Uh, Dargos. It's Evan's character. Bring Dargos to me, Victor. And that's about all I can really do. Uh, Victor goes after me. Yeah, he would move forward five feet, pick him up. Back, uh, so that's 10, 15, 25, and then just drop them in this space right here. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Uh, that, I think that's it. Okay, so I'm going to say. That's the end of that turn. Okay. Turl, you feel Strahd moving, but even though he, you know where those stairs lead, and I'm I'm going to say it doesn't feel as if he's moving in that direction. But he's still very close. Okay. So you're a little uncertain as to how or why he is where he is. But he's a little bit out of reach at the moment, but mm. close. And Oleg, um, make a perception check for me at disadvantage. Oh, also, guys, if you're looking at your character sheets, you did see I gave you inspiration, right? Oh, yeah, I was going to ask about that. Oh, okay. 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 Unfortunately, Oleg, you aren't able to figure out where Strahd went because you have these two vampires all up in your face. Sure, no problem. Yes, so, in fact, I gave it to you guys on your very first, your real characters in the first session, but you never used it, so you lost it. Um, <laughs> that's how I'm tending to run it. You guys can get it through a particular session, and you need to use it during that session. But this will basically give you a free chance to reroll a d20 for an ability check, an attack, um, 
basically any, I'd say anything you would normally roll a d20 for, if you don't like it, spend your inspiration to re-roll it, but you have to take whatever that second roll is. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so it's not like bardic <laughs> inspiration, it's like actually re-rolling the d20. Yes, and you wow. can um, obviously wait until after the first roll to say, hey, I want to use my inspiration. Sure. You don't have to declare it before. Cool. Okay. Um, Anton, we finished with you, right? Our inspiration to somebody else? Um, yeah, I allow it. Okay. And your owl is still flying, so we'll come back to that at the next round. If Right now, all that you can see is it looks to be just a very square like shaft of some sort. Um, oh, like what would you like to do? I'm completely surrounded at this point, correct? There's like one behind me and two in front of me. Is that how it works? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the full question. Sure. Um, there's one behind me. Is there two in front of me? No, there's so there's just the two in front of you, the orange and the blue. One to the north and then one in front of the other double doors to the east. So it's just those two. How far away is Dargos? He's quite a distance away since Victor pulled him further down into this hallway. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Um, can I... Uh, can I just link something? I just want to make sure that I'm looking at this right. Of course. Smythe. Uh, okay. it's, not like, it's not like Smite, though. I was going to try to bring <laughs> it down on top of me as well as the rest of it. Um, okay. I don't think I want to do that. I don't want to waste it. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to swing away. Um, All right. At the one that is actually that I can visually see is damaged. I'm guessing the one that I hit previously. Uh, the two that you hit previously moved past you, which they is did? why you have to hit them. Um, so the two in front of you are still at full health. I'm going to tell you, you guys Completely are completely useless. Here. What's that? Um, what was that, DM? I said you guys are in rough, rough shape. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Turl, you can feel Strahd moving, and it almost feels as if he's um, moving, again, at a kind of a leisurely pace. He's not in any rush towards the other end of the hallway. Okay, I'd call back and say he's circling <laughs> around us. <laughs> okay, um... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna swing at anyone that's in front of me at this point. Okay. I don't know the colors, so. Um, it's orange and blue. Can you not see the two in front of you? It's so small that I can't, I can't oh, make them out because I'm like, the almost right on it. Yeah, I have to zoom way in, otherwise I can't see crap on this okay, map. Okay, yeah. Uh, I guess I'll just hit at the orange then. Okay, go ahead. Uh, and just so everyone knows, their AC, I don't care about telling you, um, it's 15. So you definitely right. will hit with that. Six. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong. Uh, there we go. <laughs> so, anything else? Uh, there's nothing else I can do, right? Mm, yeah, you did take your action. I don't know if you want it to do any type of bonus actions. Uh, what can I do with a bonus action? Uh, it depends on. Wait, um, like your spells. attack at level five as a paladin. Uh, I don't know. Do check I? Check your sheet. Probably do. 
I don't see anything that tells me I, I, I can do two. I tried to put all of your, your main class stuff in the sheet. Paladins normally get an extra attack around like level five or six, I think it is. Uh, yeah, fifth level. Yeah, so you get an extra attack every round. Do I? It, that's just not notated anywhere, so okay. I'll make a note of that. Where Where is your sheet? Okay, go ahead. Uh, attack again. Um, I'd like to actually just use it to do lay on hands on myself. Because I don't, I can't figure, I can't see myself being able to move anywhere. All right, hold on. Um, okay, so I we'll just retcon it and say you use your. Uh, can I? It's okay if I can't. Whatever. Again, I'll 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 throw you guys a little. Go ahead, that, do that's it. That's okay. Then I I'll, I'll swing. No, no, I'll no. Swing. Go ahead, do your do your lay on hands. Just because I... I don't think I hit them. Nope, you just missed it. Okay, no problem. Okay. Can I yell out to... Can I yell yell out to Merrick? Just close the doors! Save yourselves! No! Yes! (laughs) Uh, Dargos. Make a... Yeah. Yeah. That's it, failures. Oh. Failure. No, 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 no. You're you're dying. You can say two words each turn. (laughs) If you fail three times, you die. Yeah. Um, So in your sheet, you should have a little section in the middle that says death save. And some of you guys might have the failures and the successes, um, but mark a failure. <laughs> Those are two excellent words. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> uh, Dungeon Master, we don't have fate points with these characters, right? Oh. You do okay. not no. So it now technically is Strahd's turn, but he's oh, not here in this vicinity. <laughs> um I'm going to say that all of you guys are able to perceive Turl. You can still feel him moving throughout the castle towards the other end of this hallway. Okay. Um It came from behind. So it's now the vampire spawns turn. And you can see them. Their mouths are just a slobbering maw as they're looking at you. But they hold still. And they look at you with this anger and hatred. But they begin to walk away. They disengage. And leave your area. Just walking away. Uh, walking away, glaring at you. They're not happy about this. Uh, and then question, when I hit them with fire, do the fire seem to have any you know, special effect on them? Or just, no, um, just regular it, it, damage? Yeah, just as if um, you, know, you got hit with fire. Well, maybe not you, not Merrick. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as if any of your other comrades okay. would get hit with fire. And so you see them move away. Oh, wait, no, that's you, too. Okay. And through this hallway, you hear Strahd's voice echo. You've already wasted half of your second hour. (laughs) Good luck. Yeah, combat takes a long time. And actually, it should have been less than that, but I forgot to put on the timer because I was so involved with what was happening. But um, this is real life. 
I'm keeping this in tune with what we're doing here. So I know Oh, so I know what you're saying and you're right, but this timer that's happening, it's affecting things that are happening here too. So otherwise we would literally be here for five hours. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Cheryl, you can still feel Strahd moving towards the other end of this hallway. Okay, like close enough to be still a threat or? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to let everybody know that I'm sensing him on the other side. And if, I don't know if we're still in an issue or not, but I want to move next to um, Dargos and cast uh, Cure Wounds. Okay. Um, I will give you the guys the option of if you want to drop initiative. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I don't have anything I need to do in initiative order. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll uh, drop. One question. So with my regeneration, it's one <clears throat> hit point every turn. So if we're out of the initiative order, I'm assuming it just every six seconds, I'm getting one hit point as we're making our way through the castle. Um... Yeah, sure. It, You're going to need it, it anyway. Go ahead. It'll, it'll take me up to half health eventually. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Take it. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to cast uh, Cure Wounds at second level. Oh, Dargo should get 10 HP back. Okay. Wait. You get 17. Sorry. Because it looks like it did it twice. Yeah. Because it's second level. Okay. Um, do I add that to the negative four that I was at? Is that correct? You don't go negative. You just go to yeah. zero. So I was just at zero. So I'm up to 17 now then? Yes. Okay. All right. Ugh. I get up holding my bloody f flaming wounds going, uh, that was not a good time. And Toro, you can feel Strahd right outside these double doors to the east. And he just kind of, you can see his hands with the nails kind of file down to a pointed, uh, pointed end. He just kind of peers in and says, he looks at you, Oleg. <laughs> Bet you wish you took my boon now. Since you didn't, I'll offer it to any one of you, one more time. Yes, yes. Give me your boon and leave us. <laughs> okay. So eager. I must say, it excites me. Um, roll a d8 for me, Zach. Where is this sheet? Oh, ho! Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was excited because that's the best one that you could roll. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is uh, it? What is it? Hold on, hold on. First, Anton is going to take. I will actually roll it. Where is it? Twelve bludgeoning damage from the bite. Oof. I'm surprised it's not piercing. That's what it says. Yeah, that is different. Just he sounds like it really first. hurts. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't sharpened his teeth in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ah! Okay, but I, again, he kind of just whispers something in your ear in a language that Anton doesn't recognize. And you can feel his hot breath on your, your skin. But the boom that you got is the character learns the fastest way to the room containing <gasps> the closest item or being determined by um, the fortunes of Ravenloft. It's nice. as if uh, you're under the effect of the find the path spell. Oh, well done. So this is a good point to just take a little break. I Perfect. will find that path for you. And... Um, then I can lead you there once we get back. Straw right. just kind of tosses you to the side a little bit and says, 
once again. Good luck. And I'll be seeing you very shortly. And he walks away. Closing the doors behind him. I ask before we break, has my owl found the top of that shaft yet? <laughs> yes, yes, it definitely has. I had that pulled up here, but then y'all made me look up something else. So I'll use is... I'll use cure wounds on myself while you're looking that up too, because I need okay, to heal go some. Ahead. Yeah, don't do that. Let me do lay on hands on you, so you can save the spell slot. Oh, okay, okay. Because it doesn't American. burn once for me to do it. But do I know how much? <laughs> That I can give him without wasting, wasting. extra. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll, I'll let you guys discuss that. Okay, I'm missing 30 hit points if that lets you know. Ooh. Yeah. Gas guzzler here, one. man. Okay. Wow, uh, I have 35 that I can, I have total I can spend. I will give you the 30. Okay, thank you. All right. So I have and Merrick is looking very singed. Bald patches on the head, missing hair, smells bad. <laughs> okay, so the shaft, um, it goes up, looks like about another 40, we're at, okay, no, in total about another 80 feet or so. And wow. It kind of just stops in, in a room. There's a door to the the side, or like, never, we'll say the south end. But there, there's a door within the shaft, um, but it's closed. Okay. I will okay. just say, because I already know where you're probably going to go. If you send the owl back down, um, that does goes down an incredibly long amount, um, but eventually he does have to kind of stop and because he hits what looks to be like an elevator. Okay, so are we gonna, um, we're going to take a break here then? Yes. Okay, cool. Well, hope you all are enjoying us getting our asses kicked by... Uh, <laughs> Strahd flicking his fingers and killing us, but we're going to take five, ten minutes or so here. I'll go to the break screen, and uh, we will see you all soon. You all grab a snack, because I know I'm going to pee and grab a snack, so we'll be back in a bit, my friends. <laughs> okay. <laughs>